Okay, so last time I did the pineapple, I've been kind of relegated now just to be the cameraman. So I'm in Elizabeth's kitchen, and I'm going to have her show you something that she taught me years ago, and that is how to take garlic, onions, and scallions and prepare them to season dishes. And while she's doing that, I might talk a little bit about seasoning. So here we go. Elizabeth's going to go through, and first she's going to talk about garlic. So garlic's up first, babe, right? All right, so we've got a couple of cloves of garlic here. When you choose your garlic in the store, you want to find bulbs that are like this. They're nice and heavy. They're full. The paper's not starting to pull apart yet. Garlic, all of these actually, all of these alliums, well, with the exception of those, these alliums uh, were grown last summer. And so now you're going to find some in the store that look like this because they're trying to turn into what they want to be, which is another onion. Um, and the garlic is trying to do the same thing. So if you find bulbs that have the uh, cloves starting to poke through the paper, they're too old, don't buy those. If they don't have any weight to them, don't buy those. So I've got just a couple of cloves here, and I wanted to show you the manual smash and chop, because not everybody's got a garlic grater in their, in their drawer, and frankly, sometimes this is faster. So basically, I've just got a couple of garlic cloves. If you're terrified of the knife, then grab, if you got one of these, use your bench scrape. That's safe too, but I'm not. I'm just going to smash it. The more you smash it, the less you got to chop it. So I've got my little, see my little tray over here. This is super handy for getting rid of stuff as you're working. Uh, no, you see it. It's fine. I want to be able to scooch oh, it off. I was just trying to be a stagehand. I know. Very good. Very so good. while you're doing that. So you're going to go down this oh. way first. We're going to go down. You see where the root end is here. We're going to go down. Yes, I know it falls apart because you smashed it. But then we're just going to mince. Go ahead. What did you want to say? No, I, I like how... Uh, you showed me how to cut those long ways first. I just tried to mince them before. But garlic, uh, really, as far as the seasoning profile, it's got a pungent and slightly sweet flavor with a slightly spicy and then sometimes bitter aftertaste. Now, raw garlic is much sharper, strong taste. Can be very hot. Oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, because more mellow and nutty when you cook it. And Elizabeth's going to show you at the end, she's roasting garlic right now, which gives it a rich caramelized and it can end up being a lot more sweeter and savory. So, babe, what'd you do right So, now? we just got a nice mince here. This is ready to go. This is equivalent to anything you would put through a grater. Um, and for me, it's just a whole lot faster. But if, you know, like I said, if you're afraid of the knife or you've got one in your drawer and you want to justify the price of it, go on ahead and use that garlic mincer. So, that right there, so, little babe, that's that's uh, quantity for seasoning. You're probably going to use in most dishes. Correct me if I'm wrong now. Usually about one to two cloves uh, per serving, correct? Roughly? Is that what you're talking about? I would say it really depends on what you want to do. So the more you rough these up, the sharper they're going to be. So the more you mince it, the more you smash it, the more you work with it, the more flavor you're going to get out of it. If you just drop this puppy whole into a stock or into... Say, for example, a sauce like a tomato sauce or something like that is going to be much milder than if you take the time to mince it. And generally speaking, we would take this mince and we would put it into some hot oil, and that's how we would get it going. Typically, though, we start with an onion instead because the onion can take more heat than the garlic. Once you burn the garlic, you're done. There's no coming back from that. So, I, I know. So, I'm just going to peel this onion. Just the loose stuff. I'm not trying to get all of it off. So I'm going to, this is your root end. I don't want to take it all the way off. I want to leave it intact. So I'm just going to take off what I need to take off to get this peeling. So at this point, I'm going to cut it in half. Oh, and you can see, look at this, wow. it's already starting. So I'm not going to waste this onion. I got it cut open. I'm just going to pull this out. Oh, and by the way, this one here that's already started to sprout, I'm not throwing that out. I'm going to make chicken stock later in the week. And this boy goes in just the way it is, paper and all. And it'll give it color. Paper and, and all, babe? Wait, paper, paper and all. all? Yeah, paper and wow. all. Wow. All right, so I'm going to take this tip off, which you could have done before you cut it in half, your preference. Um, then I'm just going to peel away what doesn't look good. And you can see these onions. See, they're already starting to go. So I'm going to peel away what doesn't look good. And I'm not afraid to peel away too much. Well, while she's doing that, let's talk about onions. they got a, a sweet and slightly pungent flavor with mild to medium sharpness, unlike uh, garlic. Uh, and when cooked, they become soft and sweet. They can have a really rich caramelized flavor. They can add a lot of savory and depth to sauces, stews, and soups. And Elizabeth's a master at this with sauces. 
So now what are you doing, baby? You, you I'm just chopping through it. Now, if you wanted to get all really Frenchy French, you would take this before you went and sliced it this way and cut into it this way. But this is not that big of an onion, and I really don't like having this blade come at my hand. So I'm not going to do that with this one. Now, if your eyes are watering by this time and you're wondering, gee, I just, you know, I'm a naive cook. No, you're not. This is giving off sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is incredibly... Uh, the pH is very, very low, and it hurts like heck. So one of the tricks I have learned, and I'm not doing it right now because I'm over here where the camera is, if you slice your onion over by your gas stove, the propane, the uh, what gives off uh, the byproducts of propane will dissipate the sulfuric acid, and you won't cry like that. So can I'm ask, only going to do one because it's making one, my eyes water. One more question about this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to caramelize the onions, you wouldn't cut them that way. This is just for when you're going to put them. No, if you were going to caramelize them, then I would take this onion. This is to go in the oil, followed by this, because this will form a bed to protect that from burning. If I was going to caramelize the onions, first of all, I probably wouldn't use this onion. I'd use a red onion because they're a little sweeter. Yep. So I wouldn't have to add so much sugar to them. They have their own natural sugar. And I would do, I would simply do that with them. And what they're talking about here is uh, most recipes call for a half, uh, a quarter to a half cup chopped onion uh, per serving per recipe. So depending on the intensity of flavor again. Uh, and Elizabeth just showed that you can chop it, slice it, or dice it depending on what you're doing. So uh, pretty good, Beth. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to get this out of my face. Now we're moving on to so scallions. So I keep working because, yes, they're bothering my eyes. <clears throat> These are called scallions or green onions. It depends on where you're at. Uh, different regions of the United States call all of this stuff different things we're finding out. Um, here they're called green onions. Back east they were called scallions. And you know what? The other thing we wanted to tell you too, you, when we lived back on the farm and we grew all this stuff, it was a lot hotter because it was a lot fresher. Um, so like we said, if you get this stuff at the farmer's market or you're growing it, it's going to have a lot more flavor and a lot more heat if that's what you're looking for. But towards the end of the season, they get milder and milder because they lose their flavor. Tell once. me which of that is right there. That's the roots. So you don't do anything with those? No, what would you do with that? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. That's either. why I made it. You, would you fish. check on that on flip it? Flip it? Yeah. Right. So if your recipe calls for scallion or green onion, typically it's going to tell it. Typically. Now, I'm just, I don't know what your recipe is. But typically speaking, I would go down and I would give this a cute little slice to the green. And then this would be what you saute with. Was in the onion, in the oil, and then this is your garnish. And for a garnish, I prefer garnishes that have flavor, like green onion or cilantro. Not everybody does. Some people just like flat leaf parsley for the color. I personally want the flavor. So I'm gonna just, you know, make it a little bit fancier. I'm gonna keep it on a bias, diagonal, whatever you understand, and just, you know, finish it out like a garnish. This can go on top of soup, you can go on top of stir fry, it can, I've put it into bread recipes, I've put it into mashed potatoes, um, you know, not oatmeal, shy of that, almost anything. So, so let's talk about these real quick. Uh, scallions, well, you call them green onions, which they are, mild to slightly sweet. So if intensity, it goes from garlic to onions to scallions. Uh, mild to slightly sweet flavor with uh, fresh uh, undertones, like a herbaceous undertone. They're less sharp than the regular onions and they have a pleasant crunch when eaten uh, raw. And you put them a lot of times in soup, right, babe? So you can I like them on the top of soup, especially if you're doing like a fall or something like that that has, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bone-based broth or stock uh, and it's rich and that gives it a little... A little verdant finish. You sometimes can cook them uh, and, and just themselves, the whole thing, right? Because usually uh, uh, the whole if thing. If you cook, once you cook this, it's just dead. It looks like limp green. It doesn't but, look like anything. So what so. about nutrition or what about seasoning components now? On this one, this is kind of more of a, uh, well, let's talk about how many scallions. Usually two or four scallions. So you're going to use a couple of those, right? Like, yeah, uh, probably two. Probably two. Per recipe, depending on the flavor profile you're looking at. So that's... That's not that much. Who cares, right? Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk a lot about uh, uh, some of the nutritional and com uh, uh, content, which uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, they have a lot of good uh, vitamins. So, uh, and the last thing I think I want to cover about them, what was that? That was about the... Uh, well, let me tell them what I have in my hand while they're looking at this. You do that. So this right here, you can see it's a different shape 
from the other onion, pretend that doesn't have a green end, uh, it's round. This one is not. This is more bulbular, um, almost like a closed tulip. And it's got some red. Some of them have more red than others. This is a shallot. And I really like shallot because as much as I like allium, this is all in the allium family, it can be pretty hot and it, it can really last. I do not prefer the taste of raw allium. Um, that's just me. Uh, but the shallot, however, is a lot milder. I use this in my white wine and butter fish sauces and things like that where I want that mild background flavor of allium, but I don't want it to take over. If I'm using something like uh, the white and the green, or the you know white of the green onion and white onions in a dish, and I don't really don't want it that hot, I'll soak it in water, and that'll take a lot of that um, that heat out, that bitterness, that pungent. And what I really just don't like about it is it takes over your palate and it doesn't go away. So at the end of a meal, I just don't want to be tasting raw onion for for a prolonged period of time. And shallot doesn't do that. So shallot is a nice a nice option there, and you would you know treat it the same way you would any of these others. So I won't bore you with that. So uh, last night. They often use scallions mainly, uh, or green onion as a garnish. Just, we're just when you're looking for mild seasoning, right, babe? Absolutely. Very big in Asian cuisine. Um, and she tops a lot of dishes that I think is fantastic. So here we go. Now what do you got for us? All right, so this is an option that I learned not that long ago. If you are looking for roasted garlic, and you ask, why would you use roasted garlic? Well, for one thing, this turns nutty and buttery and delicious and all I have here is a seasoned, no it's hot, a seasoned cast iron pan and it, it really is hot. Uh, a seasoned cast iron pan, I didn't add any oil to it, I just put these in papers on and what happens is, they're a little bit warm to touch, but what happens is now I've got this beautiful roasted garlic and the amount of time that it took me to talk to you about the rest of this and this is amazing. This stuff can be spread on a bruschetta it can go into your mashed potatoes. I use it in hummus. Um, I use it in a lot of my beans, like a refried. I do a non-refried, non-fat refried, not fried bean, um, and I'll use these. And I wish you could smell it. They're so caramelized, and you can see that. Look how soft they are. This will actually spread with a butter knife, and it's delicious. If you've never tried it, go on ahead and try it. You can do this little trick with tomatillos also. They're a little bit messier, but the garlic, this is a fun thing to do. There she is. Oh, you're right on. Okay. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, next coming up is going to be a video that we do that I'm going to do on some of the health benefits of uh, garlic. And I tell you what, uh, garlic, onions, and scallions do have some health benefits. Not so much for the macros, but for the micros. But... It's a really good choice, and my wife, uh, I told her a long time ago, I don't really like garlic, and she, she explained to me that garlic's in just about all the food I eat. Everything but your oatmeal. Except e and everything, me. But <laughs> everything but you. Everything but you, literally. So, and they're a great antioxidant, too, so if you have people in your family with allergies, this is a really good thing to be supplementing. Oh, oh we're going to be talking about that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Until next video, stay healthy, eat healthy.